Hi guys, welcome to the channel. Welcome. If you're new, I'm Stacy, and today we are going to be painting a pepper. Um, I'm going to be using my beam paints. This is what they look like all swatched out on their little swatch card. And this is what they look like in their palette. I love these paints. I got them for myself as an early, early Christmas present. Um, I'm going to set my swatch off to the side over there so that I could play with them and paint with them to my little heart's content. So yeah. <laughs> I'm not even beating around the bush about that. Let's move this light in a little bit. There we go. Okay. So. It's a little dark over here. I'm sorry about that. Uh, it's nighttime, so the lighting is not that great. Ooh, pardon me. Do we want a little border on our painting? I think we do. Let's do a little border. Just because it looks more, I don't know, professional and finished. And it doesn't have to be a big border. It can be just a teensy border. I'm working on my um, Stonehenge. Stonehenge 300 pound cold press watercolor paper also bought as kind of an early Christmas gift um, I just really needed watercolor paper honestly and instead of going cheap and being unhappy with the results of my art I decided to spend a little bit of money not arch money but um, definitely worth it the Stonehenge watercolor paper is actually really nice um, both the 140 pound and this 300 pound paper. This is a little nicer for me than the, um, uh, what, what is it? The Fluid 100 series, um, 300 pound paper that I've used in the past. Um, this isn't as delicate. That paper doesn't really take, take very well. This one does a little better, just a little bit better. There we go. All taped off put that back in frame and then grab I have two things of water over here they'll be just off to the side over here <coughs> my phone out of the way let's get to painting um, I want this to be a fun kind of piece um, it is drawn very heavily on purpose I want the pencil to kind of come through a little bit I'm going to go ahead, I'm not going to be too careful around the leaves, but I do want to do a little bit of a, um, just pretty background. Get it there, there. Um, this is a, a Princeton Neptune round number eight. Yes. Paintbrush. It is one of my favorites. It's one of the ones I've been using for years. It's my very first watercolor paintbrush that I bought for myself. That was a little more expensive than any paintbrush I'd ever gotten. And I really love it. So it is in my permanent love collection of brushes. I have a Princeton Velvet Touch round number 10 that I've been loving a lot as well. And then, um, usually for my big washes, I use a my Princeton Neptune round number 10. All right, let's see. Um, I usually spritz these. I'm not sure why. Some of them seem to need it, and some of them don't, and this is just easier. I think there's dog hair right there. Yeah, we'll just pluck that out of there. My Caesar dog. Okay. My daughter's dog. Alright, let's do a little... Let's choose background color. <coughs> Something that'll look nice against the red. I think I'm going to do this experiment. Spring green. Kind of just plop it in. I'm going to try to keep this video um, at around a half an hour. Around my pet. 
paper. I don't mind going over the leaves because I'm going to just paint those a darker green anyways. Got a little too wet up there, but that's alright. Just lift it up. A couple spots like that, and then I think I want to do a little splatter. If you don't like splatter, don't do it, you guys. Don't do what I'm doing just because I'm doing it. Um, I'm going to take that and dab it in a few areas like that while it's still pretty wet. Like that. Yeah, I like that. Mm -hmm. It's good as a quick dry. I will edit out the drying portion of the videos. Um, I do try to do that. Okay. <coughs> Let's get into pushing my keyboard in there. There we go. Got a little debris here and there, but that's all right. All right. Now, now as you can tell, I'm not using a palette. Um, I was thinking, I wish I had a palette out. Um, I haven't, I haven't purchased a palette to put these in yet. I'm going to, I believe, purchase the same one that I got for my M Graham and. Um, Derwent paint palettes because the plastic trays inside of those pop out and there's more than enough room for these plus my extras that I have in this little tray right here um, to all fit together so yeah that is my thought alright let's I think I want to do yeah we'll just I'm going to do this strawberry red to start. Actually, you know what I'd like to do first? I'd like to put in a little bit of pink. And really let that soak in. A little too much water. That's alright. I can always pick it up. Yeah, and the a nice couple of streaks of pink in. And then, then we can go in over the top. Wet into wet, um, and get in our bright red color. You see it's bleeding around a little bit. I want that. A deep enough red, do you think? Our edge here. That. water and kind of dampen that a little string of hair or something. 
close that down and around. Don't be afraid to create textures in your in your work either. Um, it helps define shape. All right, and then I want to go in with this magenta. right on the paper. Grab a little red to go with it. Red and magenta mixed together right here. It's the strawberry red. That magenta, I feel like it gives that red that deep, that depth that I want. without popping in a gray or a purple or a black. I feel like this is going to work. I'll just drag it around the edges. Still pretty damp, the paper, but it is starting to dry. So that will give me some time to play around and move the colors about and purposely not filling it all in you guys because we've got our little shine spots right like that put this together to softer shine over there and then a little bit of shine up through here like that. I'm going to leave it alone let it dry. We're going to work on our leaves. And then if we want, we can come back over the top with and deepen it and give it some more shadows. Um, thinking of mixing these two together. Now I feel like I need a little palette. Shadow colors are tricky. A little more magenta. Touch of red. A little bit of purple. Touch more red. Yeah. That. A little bit. Through here, peppers are textured. They're they're not they're smooth on the outside, but their their shapes are very um. Bumpily, if I can use that, that word as a descriptor. Now, I'll dry this a little bit. Do a little bit of dry brushing through there. That. All right, we'll see how that dries. I'll stop fussing with it. Otherwise, I'm not going to like it. Okay. Let's get some green going on our leaves. I've got too much red. Let's use our clean water. Pull that up. A damp brush, not wet. Damp. I wet it in the water and then got most of the drippies off on the towel and we're just going to come in here and skim water over the top of our leaf and we'll do the same over here like so Oh, oops. I don't mind if that bleeds up a little bit, but I don't want it to be too, get too carried away. Okay, let's put on some color. That's too much water. I can already tell. Alright, 
first I want to start with a little shimmer. And no, the leaves do not have a shimmer. I mean, kind of. But they, I do want them to have a little bit of artistic flair. So I'm going to paint a little bit of shimmer on all my parts. Like that. And this guy comes down like this. shimmer through there. Grab some more. Put it in here. Just I feel like it'll add a little bit of interest to the piece uh, in different lights. And I am really loving this brand's um, shimmer paint a lot. All the, the ones, the mica is so fine that it gently shimmers. You can't really tell on camera, but in person it is just gorgeous. And I fully intend to try to use these on my large canvas piece that I'm going to do, which you guys will see um, next Friday. So be on the lookout for that. I'm going to do a large mixed media piece um, on canvas. And we're going to incorporate a bunch of different elements. I'm very excited about it. Hopefully it turns out. Um, maybe we'll do pine green. Let's do a little... I haven't used the pine green very much. We'll just... Gently drop it in and let it bleed and mix around with that shimmer paint. Like that. I'm just dropping it in. Encourage a little movement. Now the beam paints, um, I've discovered, move around a little bit. The more water, the more they move, of course, but um, there's more of a sense of control with them that I don't have with other paints. Um, like Core. Core has a lot of movement. It's supposed to. That's why I got the Core paints is because of the, the lovely movement that they have. How's that? Isn't that pretty? It's a little... There we go my board up so it's not so glary and we're gonna yeah, I'm digging this color I'm gonna leave that alone for a bit this bled out a little bit but I'm not gonna not gonna fuss with it in this. This is fun. A little bit of a looser application with the paint. Um, kind of letting it play a bit on the page, which I normally have a hard time with. Uh, letting the paint do what it wants to do, you know. of color here and there and I'm really liking that pencil peeking through kind of a lot helps do some of the work for me um, 
guess you could call this a mixed media piece since there's graphite doing some of the lifting, some of the heavy work. But I don't think it's so much so that, um, I can't consider this a watercolor piece, right? You guys let me know what you think. There. Then these little bits. Leave a little bit of light for a sparkle, so that it sparkles. Yeah, I'm kind of digging that. What I'm not enjoying is this bleeding out like that. I don't really want it to bleed out like that. Just pick it up. Just pick it up. Grab and then a dab. There we go. Okay, I need a finer point. Whew. I'm gonna stick with this green and maybe a touch of olive. Come in here. Really. And a little bit of fun markings. Oh. Textures. This is almost dry, so the paint is more dry on the, br or the, the brush is more dry with um, more pigment so that I can create some textures like that, which is super fun. We'll come up here, do the same thing, get some cool textures going on. Almost done with this painting, you guys. Almost there. Dark right there. Because it's back behind and down. Like that. These, the um, stems tend to be a little textured. They're very tough looking, like they're doing a lot of hard work. Too wet, sorry. Focus. Oh, yeah, that creates that beautiful depth that we want, right? Hmm. This one could be a little dark back here. Right there. Down on the bottom. Green 
going on those there. How are we doing? And they don't all have to connect either. Get that roll. I want it to look like it's folding. <coughs> Just a little bit of texture right through there. Dig it. Okay. That leaf is done. Not fussing with that anymore. I'll come in here with some olive. Need just a touch of water. So that, there it is. So that it will let me create these beautiful texture lines. I dig that. Okay. And then just a bit. Underneath. Right there. Yeah. Cool. And then. There. Fun. Okay. And a little bit more of our light green down here. Like that. And we can go ahead and put just a little hint of it here and there. Doesn't have to be a crazy amount, just a bit. Like that. Yeah, dig it, dig it, dig it, dig it. See, and I, this is where I need to figure out do I want to stop or do I want to paint and pick and paint and pick and you know, really, really, really perfect this. And that's not what I, how I started the painting, right? I didn't start wanting to perfect it. I just wanted it to be a fun, pretty painting, right? Maybe I should splatter with this. Ooh. Okay. That's all the splatter. Definitely don't want to bring it on there, though. Okay. And then... Give them each a little spritz so that they... Yeah, I like that act, action. A little bit of action going on. Do you guys like the action? Yeah, it's pretty. Throw in a little bit of sparkle. A little bit of dark. I like that. Kind of balances out the dark that's going on here. Maybe a little bit of brush work like that. Just the textures. Like that. I 
like that. Okay. Now our pepper. I feel like I feel like it could use not this. Good enough. This red. I want it to be a touch less pink. So I'm going to go in with some of this. Oh, you know what? I could go in. Nope. Turtle belly. Which is this more deep red. See? Let me. See, there you can tell the difference. It's more of an orange. And mix that in to kind of deepen that up a little bit. There we go. A little bit of water. So I want to I want to do a glaze over the whole thing and see what happens. Maybe I should use a softer brush. Not a lot of water. Pick up our paint. And then thing like that okay good and then I want that Nice spot of shine right there. There's a really nice spot of shine. There we go. And then just a couple of little spots over here. Like that. Maybe a little more permanent. Like that. And then just a little bit right here. There. All right. And then let's dry it real quick so I can make sure there's nothing else I want to do. There we go. All dry. <coughs> let's take our tape off. Scooch everybody out of the way. Which way did I do this? There we go. Gently. Take all of our tape off. There. And there. And there's our piece. I kind of dig it. Um, it could be. I feel like this could use some colored pencil, honestly. Um, I feel like it's not quite. Um, I don't know. Rich enough. Maybe that's what I'm looking for. Just go bold, right? Another layer on top of beautiful red. That that high shine spot is just. Too much for me, I think. <coughs> there we go. 
that's better. That's better. That's more of a red. Um, still, I really did get rid of that shine spot right there. I'm done fussing. Ta da! And I like the little bit of glitter on the leaves. That little bit of shine. Can you see it? <laughs> it just adds a little bit of fun to the piece, I think. What do you guys think? I enjoyed it. That bright red pepper in the middle of all that green. It's really pretty. Let me know what you think in the comments below, and I will see you guys in the next video. Don't forget to like and subscribe and stick around for more um, creative action on the channel. Bye!